Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use ASP.NET MVC Core's middleware. Uh, middleware is exactly what it says. It's between the user and your code. Uh, middleware allows you to use images, use routing, directions, error handling, etc. I'm going to demonstrate a show by showing a picture from a textbook. This textbook is ASP Core Net in Action, second edition. Uh, the author's name is Andrew Locke. It's a very good book. And I'm viewing this off of O'Reilly.com. Um, these pinkish blocks here in the middle are your middleware. Now these two that are displayed here in figure 3, two are the authentication and authorization middleware. So a request comes through. And if the request passed through authorization with a valid user, or authentication with a valid user gets passed on to authorization. If at any point it fails, it bounces back through here. This endpoint is your code. This endpoint also includes a default 404 response. So if you try to put, you know, enter something that's not there, endpoint will respond with the 404. So you can see the web server passed the request into here. Authentication associates user authorization checks to see if they're allowed. If the user is not allowed, it short circuits. You can see that through here. And again, it can short circuit anywhere in here. If it is allowed, it hits the endpoint. The endpoint does whatever the endpoint is supposed to do, and then it returns back HTML back to the user. There are dozens of middleware, and you can write your own. You get some third-party ones that do a lot of work. But ASP.NET gives you the majority of the middleware that you need right off the bat. So I've started with a blank, empty ASP project, and I've added a couple things. I've added a www root folder, and I've added a pages with the simple my test page. We're going to go into startup and configure launches everything, all of our middleware. So I'm going to delete everything that's there. All right. So it's all gone. It's minimized. Not much happens at this point. So I'm going to use the first piece of middleware here. App is the application builder. This is your project. All the middleware is going to start with use. So authentication, authorization, certificate for it, a cookie policy, default files, def directory browser, endpoints, file service, a bunch of them here. Okay. Some of them are really critical, like use MVC, that's really important. Use router, very important. Others not so important, depending on what you need. So I'm going to use welcome page. I'm going to run this now. This is what it looked like before I ran it. Actually, it's not going to pop up, is it? Before I ran it, just said hello world. Um, now it just this is the welcome page. You know, before I made these uh, modifications, it simply said hello world. But this is the welcome page middleware. So clearly, that's not something we want. We want to use static pages. So I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to add a new middleware called Use Static Pages. Now, if you're an old school web developer like I am, you know static pages, those HTML pages just don't change. They're not data driven, they're not interactive with the user. They're also pictures. So if you want things like images on your website, that's a static files. I'm going to run this this time, and you'll notice. In my www folder, I have a picture of me there. Close the old ones. Go to second for it to load. Nothing's there. But if I put in a link to my picture, my beautiful picture appears. That loads because of use static files. If I don't have static files, then I can't load pictures up. I can't load index HTMLs. Thank you, Brave. All right, the next trick is called routing. Routing is something that you're going to get very good at with ASP. Routing allows you to build links between pages. Again, if you're an old school AS, uh, HTML developer, you're used to AHREF. We don't really use those here in MVC. We use routes. 
I have another video devoted solely to routes. Uh, this routing is allowing me to have access to the CSHTML pages. So if you look here, I created, as I showed you before, my index.cshtml page. I want to be able to access that. So in here I can do all sorts of what method I want, but now I'm going to make this thing pop up. So here we go, I've got use, use routing. And again, routing is the middleware that allows you to create navigation between your MVC pages. Routing is extremely complicated, that's why I'm giving you its own video. Use endpoints allows your program to load. And this one takes a generic function I like to close my semicolons before I code, otherwise I'll forget. Oops, I can almost code. So this be endpoints dot. Razor is the technology that allows you to build HTML within CSHTML. Um, it has a number of really cool functionalities built in. Let's see if I can format this. Format's hidden. Oh well. Let's see what happens when we run this now. Okay, so this one gives me an error. And if I read the error, the error is very clean. Unable to find required services. Please add all the required services by calling the add razor pages. Now that's done in configure services. Now I intentionally got this error so that you can see how to read them and to deal with them. So I'm going to stop my project. I'm going to scroll up to configure services, which is currently blank. Now configure service does what it, exactly what it says. It configures the services your project needs. I'm going to add razor pages. Give it a minute to run. There's my test page. Of course, index pops up because it's index. I could add another page here. So I'm adding a razor page. I'll make it empty. Let's give it a name. Call it video. I'll put something here. Random trivia of the day, that was the very first song that played on MTV. Alright, let's run this again. I keep rerunning this because I'm messing with the middleware. You have to stop and rerun your project if you're editing the middleware. If I was just editing CSHTML, I could just, you know, refresh. Close some of these other ones. Do this middle load. Now to get there, I simply need slash video and it pops up. That is a route, the URL slash either a folder or a file. I have a file, but that's a route. Again, we'll spend a lot of time talking about that in another video. That zooming tool I use is ZoomIt from Microsoft's Power Toys. All right, so let's not deal with error handling. By default, 404 already runs. Um, you can build your own 404 pages. We're not going to do that today. I'm going to do some basic errors. Okay, so let's um, intentionally cause a problem. Right? So I'm going to do some basic, some simple programming here. 
Now, ASP is very robust. It took me a long time to get this division by error to actually load. That's why I'm using a separate variable there. When I just did 5 divided by 0, C Sharp just said, nope, it's not going to happen. So I run this now. We're going to get an awful error. That's right on my index page. You're going to see screens like this a lot. Oh, I actually expected a worse error. Okay. Um, we get HTTP error 500. That's pretty useless here. I can't handle the request because it's division by zero. But it doesn't tell us it's division by zero. It just says error. Why is it an error? We know it's an error because it's division by zero, but it should have told us. Um, we'll get the better errors here in a minute. So I'm going to go back to configure in Startup CS. And I'm going to add this now as the very first line. Now, order becomes very important in middleware. I'm going to use what's called the developer exception page. The developer exception page is used by you guys as the programmers to come up with errors that are helpful. Uh, you want to get rid of this whenever you put it in, you know, develop, in production, not production mode, whenever you put it in release mode and get it out to the world. But for production and developments, this is useful. Now I'm going to run this thing. Now we get a really helpful error. Okay, this is an error that programmers can deal with. Division by zero. Index CSHTML, line 6. And then here's the effective line that it's angry about. These errors aren't always this helpful. You know, I intentionally set this up to, to make this work. But, you know, that's an error. That's something you can deal with. That 500 error was useless. And developer exception page pulled that off. Okay, last thing I'm going to deal with here, so I'm going to modify this page. Developer exception page, you want to see when you're in development mode. When you are done and you've released it, you don't want to see it. So I'm going to... put an if statement around here. Oh, I'm sorry, using the wrong variable. Um, the environment, not the app. The environment. Environment is the Visual Studio and the project environment itself. This use exception handler is going to fire up the folder slash error. Um, as we move forward in this class and these set of videos, I will demonstrate how this pulls off. But right now we are in development mode. So we're going to keep seeing this error. When we get done and it's ready for release, we change the mode and this error pops up. But we have to handle that. And again, that's really complicated. So that's going to be the focus of this entire video. All right, so what you've learned here is you've learned about middleware. Uh, what you're primarily going to do with middleware, especially early on, is you're going to take whatever Microsoft gives you in their default projects and just go with it. And then as you need more tools, you add middleware that exists right here inside of Configure. When you get much better at this, you start writing your own middleware. You know, perhaps you want your middleware to connect the database the way you connect your database, not the way Microsoft wants you to do it. You can write your own code. All right, so thank you and good luck.